In this video, I am going to take an honest look at some of the less popular characters and how something like powerful teammates or constellations can bring out the best of them, as well as showcase their max potential. First, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Lord of Heroes. Now, if you're like me and you love playing mobile RPGs, then I definitely think you should check this one out. In Lord of Heroes, you are, well, a lord that recruits different characters. And the thing I like most about it is that anyone can become your main hero because you can raise even the lowest rarity character all the way up to max 6 stars. So it's really up to you who you want to build. And in the latest update, there's a new hero, Dark Lucilica, who specializes in weakening her enemies and dealing a ton of damage from her burst. And as you can see, all of the characters, their animations, and even cutscenes are absolutely gorgeous. But what's even better, the game has an interesting story that takes place in several different timelines where you conquered the lands. And in fact, the latest update features a new story called War of the Tyrants, where you will need to go back in time and save the world by finding out what truly happened in the past. And the developers even added multiple language supports to enjoy the story in game. So make sure to use my link in the description box, help support my channel, and check out Lord of Heroes now. So if you've been playing the game for a while just like me, you're probably a bit tired of seeing the same meta teams showcased by every content creator, and I wanted to do something a little different. This newest Abyss cycle is honestly really easy, so there's a lot more breathing room left for teams that you can build without needing to rely too heavily on perfect synergy, although some characters I will showcase are actually pretty insane. And I'm not saying you need to build these teams, I just want to appreciate the fact there's still plenty of fun compositions out there, and above all else, I did discover some really interesting things, which I believe you you'll appreciate as well. So let's start with Lisa, or more precisely, C6 Lisa. I managed to get her last constellation some time ago, and I discovered that it pretty much transforms the way you can play her. Obviously, I'm fully aware there's not that many of you who unlocked her C6, especially since she is a starter character, but little by little, if you keep playing the game long enough, you can max her out from just Paimon Shop alone. But what's different about this version of her? Well, normally, when pressing her elemental skill, you apply one stack of conductivity on enemies, and then by holding down the skill again, you unleash a powerful AoE that scales damage based on the amount of conductivity stacks the enemy has. And the beautiful thing about her last constellation is that you immediately apply all three stacks when switching to her, which means you save up a lot of time you would otherwise need to spend doing it, and this basically becomes a very simple rotation, where you run into a group of enemies, switch to her, apply maximum amount of stacks, use her burst, and then hold the skill button to unleash a powerful attack. I mean, just look at these damage multipliers here and the numbers she's able to produce. My only wish was that she could vaporize or melt the damage for even more spectacular screenshot damage. Now, I know, I know, this still means you need to stand in one place and hold the skill, which is a major turnoff for a lot of players, not to mention the fact she's a starter character who's best remembered for her climbing skills. But here's the thing, if you have Raiden, she's quite a powerful support for her. Not only does her burst shred 15% of enemies' defense, but you can also equip on her Noblesse Forced, and if you want to take things even further, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is also a good option, but my own team that I came up with is a pretty wacky one. Both Kokomi and Lisa are using Thrilling Tales, and the way it works is that I open up the rotation with Raiden, use Kazuha or Sucrose for Animo, then switch to Kokomi for her skill, who then buffs Lisa after switching to her, does her burst and skill damage, and then finally switch back to Raiden who now benefits from all these buffs shown here and slashes for a nice amount of damage. It's a fun composition. You can easily use a different catalyst that focuses on Lisa's own personal damage, but I honestly just enjoy using her since it's really easy to pull off big damage numbers, even if it means I need to stand in one place with her for a few seconds. And of course, it is important to address her burst extremely long 20 second cooldown, but on the flip side, in certain abyss chambers, it's actually worth to continue using Lisa's normal attacks to finish off the remaining enemies, so when you finally switch to right she can use her burst slash on the new wave. Overall, C6 Lisa is super fun to use. I just wish Hoyoverse could have made this ability into one of her passives instead and not lock it away as the last constellation upgrade. Obviously, you can still play her as a dedicated damage dealer or support without C6, but in this video, I wanted to show you what to look forward to when you get this awesome upgrade for her. Speaking of upgrades, this is the second character I wanted to show to you, who ignores everything that Hoyoverse did for her and becomes a glorified shield generator. Almost one year ago, Yenfei was introduced as the budget clue to the world, but little did we know that after unlocking her fourth constellation, she becomes a budget Zhongli. Okay, maybe calling her a budget version of these 5 stars is a little unfair, because I actually like the way her playstyle transforms if you can get her fourth constellation. Basically, after you use her burst, she will create a pyro shield that will have 45% of her health, and that's a big chunky number you can produce that almost rivals the Geo Daddy himself. And all you have to do is just use those useless artifacts with HP main stat, except for Sans, because you want a lot of energy recharge on her, otherwise she's not able to provide a shield, and then put her into either Hu Tao's or Meldganyu's team. 
Now, I've spent quite some time with her, and in these teams, I found that using Prototype Amber along with 4-piece Noblesse brings great results, since the only thing she needs is to make sure the burst is ready when you switch to her, so might as well get some other benefits going. You could also try using Thrilling Tails on her, but I found that stability of more energy from Prototype Amber is a better choice, even if it provides energy only to her. Now, why should you use C4 Yenfei with someone like Hu Cao? Well, for starters, maybe you don't have Zhongli, or maybe you want to use him in the other team if you're doing the Abyss. Also, because Yenfei can easily apply Pyro, using animal characters gives a big bump to Hu Cao's personal damage, and so far, I found that a team of Yenfei, Xing Cho, Hu Cao, and Kazuha or Sucrose is really strong. In fact, one awesome synergy that rarely gets talked about is Xing Cho's damage reduction from his rain swords. There's actually a simple formula that shows that when using the Bookner's damage reduction with a shield, it effectively gains more health. Although that's more of a just a mathematical trick, since it helps visualize the results better. But think of it like this, you receive less damage, so this also means you can absorb more damage. And this is one of many reasons why Walnut's meta team comp thrives. When using Zhongli's or Xingqiu's skills together, but the same can also be done with Yenfei as well. And yeah. I know this is the second underrated character I talk about who needs constellations to work, but again, the longer you play this game, the more close you get to acquiring more constellations, and maybe sometimes you also get closer to an artifact world that goes from this to this. Alright, we looked at some characters powered by constellations, now it's time to look at some characters powered by losing your 50s 50s. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who after seeing Kaching's costume, it made me want to create a team for her, and that's what basically happened here. It's kind of sad to look at Abyss usage statistics and see Kaching at the bottom, because if you get to know her, she's actually really fun and strong. I mean, I get it, she definitely has her own set of flaws, like the fact she loves draining her stamina bar empty, especially when using her with pyro characters, and then chasing around overloaded enemies. However, I actually stopped using her electro-infused charge attacks in certain situations, like the 12-1 with Nobushi Samurais, because it's just better to quick swap to someone else and save up that stamina for the next rotation. Speaking of which, there are many teams you can build with Kaching, many free to play variations as well, but ever since Gujo Sara got released, I've been hearing a lot of great things about these two when paired together. So naturally, the next thing was to create a hyper Kaching team to see what it's all about. And let me tell you, it's great. I mean, it's not busted or anything, and there's some fast thinking that needs to be done when using Electro Kaching, but overall, I am able to get a nice rotation going against 12-1 Samurais by opening up with her skill, dash cancelling out of it, casting Kazuha's long press skill, then burst, afterwards going to Benny's skill and burst, then switching to Kujo Sara and using her skill if you have her C2, otherwise just use her burst, and finally, switch back to Kaching's burst to see a satisfying end of combo. But I want to be honest with you, I do have C6 Kujo Sara, who can hit for 100 thousand crits alone, which is kind of funny seeing that it's Kaching who's supposed to be hyper here, but in reality, I've seen many other showcases of these two together, where even C0 Kujo Sara works, although it's not something I would recommend to go for myself unless you really love the challenge of using her charge shots. But really, if you can get a C2 Kujo Sara, throw in Benny Boy and an animal character, this Kaching team is going to be just fine. I also want to quickly mention that when using Kaching as a quick swap damage dealer, her best in slot artifacts are double two sets of 18% attack bonuses. Since, just like many other characters, most builds will be lacking attack, and it's highly likely you can obtain these sets with decent or strong substats. Finally, as mentioned before, this is just one team I focused on. You can easily build Electro Charge variations where she shines, and overall, I just wanted to shed some light on her, instead of always focusing on that next big upcoming character. Oh, and just to be clear, my Kaching is C0, and the only time I got her was from her very own banner, so I actually never obtained her from losing 50s 50s. They were all stolen by Mo. However, there is a certain someone that's been showing up in my recent polls. I mean, it had to be done. Everyone in the community keeps joking about Chi Chi and how she keeps popping up after you lose a 50 50. But do you really lose or instead win another constellation for this absolutely busted character who is secretly absolutely broken? Okay, but with all seriousness, I have seen some great content creators covering our favorite undead when the new artifact clam set dropped, and I finally decided to try it out myself. Now, I won't sugarcoat and tell you how it elevates Chi Chi as a top damage dealer because the sad reality is, she's not really meant to be a damage dealer. Well, at least not when you're in the end game. See, the thing is, Chi Chi's personal damage is really low. It rarely contributes more than 10 to 20% of overall team's damage when using her with other strong sub damage dealers. However, what makes her stand out are the fast normal attacks she's able to deliver 
deliver. In fact, maybe you've heard this term before, but she's actually a great driver for Beto's Burst. Driver as in meaning someone who keeps unloading Beto's Burst's lightning with normal attacks. You can get even more advanced and do something like her N2 jump cancel to achieve almost perfect synergy with Beto's Burst's hidden timer. Now, because her healing scales with attack, I built her with attack sands and goblet while the circlet had healing bonus in order to maximize on the bubble pop damage from her ocean hood artifact set. I also gave her a sacrificial sword, which doubles the duration of her skill, which otherwise has an extremely long cooldown. So with this change, it works out pretty nicely when paired together with Fischl, who will be able to trigger more electro reactions with Oz and contribute to even more damage. You could otherwise go with Favonius or Aquila Favonia to either get more energy for the team or to increase her attack, which helps with healing and producing more clam damage. But with all that said, the core team I found that works really well is Chichi, Beto, Fischl, and either an animal character or Xing Cho. For this showcase, I chose to go with Xing Cho, and I was able to get 9 stars on this newest abyss cycle. So I guess you could say Chi Chi is great, especially with the current blessing of the moon. Obviously, I am aware I'm using 3 powerful characters with Chi Chi, who are doing the heavy lifting, but come on, the undead girl is at least a driver here. Sure, a lot of other characters can do her job, but she's slightly good here due to how fast her normal attacks are, plus, don't forget she's also healing. So while her personal damage is not amazing, no matter how much you try to improve it, at least you can have some fun with her in this newest abyss cycle. And on top of that, you really don't need powerful artifacts or weapons. Even something like Prototype Rancor gets the job done. But if you want to get the best value out of her clam artifact set, then Sacrificial Sword is really good on her. So if you're bored of the abyss or want to use a less conventional character in your taser comps, Chi Chi is a solid choice. I know I will be cheating here, but I can't really focus on the final fifth character without giving a shout out to less popular characters like Deluke, Sayu, Traveler, and Toma. All of them are great. Deluke, once king of tier list, can still push out big numbers with melt and vaporized team comms. Sayu, while not that great for Abyss, makes world exploration faster. The Traveler, especially the Geo version, is actually a fun unit that sometimes makes things less fun with weird collisions he causes from his boulders and burst, but otherwise really solid as the rock choice for Geo teams. And and even someone like Toma, poor Toma, who I rarely see in the Abyss showcases, can still get the job done as a shielder, even if he likes to steal the occasional vape from Hu Tao. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video before we get the hype train going for the next new character, because there are so many of the existing characters to choose from, and I know that the biggest thing that prevents players from trying things out is the annoying gacha game design, with the amount of resources we're getting, but if you do decide to try out a less popular character, I hope this video was at least interesting to you. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and leave a like. Thanks again and see you soon.